So I should probably explain a few things. Welcome to Global Conflicts, Palestine. Um, as you've most likely been able to tell, I've not been uploading videos recently because I'm making a point-and-click adventure game, and that kind of that shit just kind of swallowed my time learning adventure game studio and various other things. And also, I was just in a point where it was hot, I was tired, I had things to do, my body was like, do I want to record something? Uh, not really. And, and to be fair, Jay Cypher really just sapped. <laughs> that last set legitimately just made me go, ugh, at the end of it. But, I have committed myself to trying to play interesting games, and I had actually found another game which I will play, most likely after this one, which, as you might be able to tell, is, if it's in a similar vein to this, is somewhat politically charged. Global Conflicts Palestine, however, came up as a game that honestly would be a great entry point for people who are probably not too understanding of the more complex realities on the ground of the Israel-Palestine conflict. My own political feelings about this are not going to be affecting this one way or the other. I am... I'm not even going to put it on the video. I am very much just a... If you want to talk about politics, we'll talk about politics over there and I'll probably get loud and shouty. However, this game is put together as an educational tool. As something to show how journalism affects narratives. How people on the ground can engage with people who are eyewitnesses or who are involved in stories but still have to push things one way or another in order to actually get the full disclosure, the real information out of them. And I just find that given the game I'm about to go into, which is going to very much be more of a propaganda kind of piece uh, called Under Ash, but we'll get to that when we get to it, but feel free to look it up because man, that's some shit. Um, I felt like this would be a good game to kind of get into, and apparently there's actually some more. Like, this won a bunch of awards, um, fairly well respected from the educational community at the very least, and I'd be interested to see how it plays. I'm going to try not to, like, make light of what is a very real and terrible conflict happening right now, as, as there are horrible things happening all over the world, but uh, we have to compartmentalise the horrible things that happen around us, otherwise we'll just go fucking nuts! Or drink heavily! Or both. Or just eat a lot of twirls. I should not mind. I'm looking guiltily at a bag of twirls in front of me like I should put those away. But my hand keeps grabbing towards them. Anyway, let's... Oh fuck, that probably blew the mic out. Sorry. Uh, let us just kick into this. Uh, so we could use to be Hannah or Duan. Now, I'm not entirely certain if there is going to be an actual difference here. I've got a feeling that Hannah is going to be more f more f received well on the Jewish side of things, on the Israeli side of things, whereas Diwan Masood is naturally going to be a Palestinian heritage, he is going to maybe be more... He's, people may be more receptive to him. I'm not sure if the game will actually mechanise this. It would be interesting to maybe see how two approaches, one with Hannah, one with Diwan, would actually... Ref how, if that would change anything at all, like, I know there are religious and uh, social dynamics, especially regarding gender, that do play out in, the, in these communities, it would be very interesting to see if that's actually something that comes up in the game or not. For now, I'm just gonna stick with- I'm not gonna do a joke now, I feel like this game at least deserves a modicum of respect, but I'm gonna stick with the one. I feel like, possibly, I mean- I don't think one's hard and one's... I don't think easy mode and hard mode are how this is playing out, but I'm going to stick with Duan, and we'll see how that goes. If possibly, we may actually just alternate between them and see if people are more receptive one way or the other. But anyway, let's crack on. So we got six... Oh, I just saw the third one! Okay. Uh, sorry, not the, not the fourth one. Anyway, uh, military raid. You've just arrived in the Middle East and things are already heating up. Not knowing exactly what to expect and having no contacts of your own, you will start out by talking to your editor who will become a steady pillar of support for you through your period in the region. In this first mission, you'll be commissioned by your editor to go along on a military raid planned and executed by the Israeli Defense Force in collaboration with the Palestinian Authority. The IDF has gotten word that a weapons cache is to be found in the house of in, in Abu Dis and it is sending out a small squad of soldiers to secure any weapons that might be found. These reports are taken very seriously by the IDF, and it is not often that journalists are allowed to go along. 
As a journalist, you will be covering the mission as a neutral part. You'll observe how such missions are carried out, you will get to see how arrests are made, and you will get the chance to talk to both soldiers and possible suspects. And there's some issues you don't want to consider, as this is something that you could maybe play through in a class and then sit around and discuss afterwards. How is a potential prisoner treated? What are the dangers of missions like this? How can you know who is telling the truth, and how reliable is the information that you can get in these situations? Which, again, all very valid questions you should be asking yourself in this kind of situation, this kind of game. I, you can kind of understand how, like, this has tickled that, like, mm, this is very interesting, actually, kind of gland in my brain. But anyway, I, that's exactly the... Oh, it's loading. May take a few minutes? My, my, my AMD CPU wishes to differ, sir. Now, there we go. Let me guess. You're the one, my suit, right? Oh, I've got different uh, dialogue. Oh, yes, of course I've got different dialogue. Ah! So, opinion of... So, people's opinion of me will differ as well. And I'm wondering if maybe it may start in different locations depending on who I am. Uh, I can only assume you're Henry Fulbright, my new editor. Well, I mean, I looked up in the top right-hand corner and your name was there. I have this ability where I can tell how people think of me. That's absolutely right. It's not difficult to recognise a newcomer in this part of the city, but I'll help you get started with your job and give you some tips so you don't get completely lost. Okay, uh... Well, let's go with the tutorial just to make sure everything's okay. Just in the flapping of that man's mouth. I really appreciate that. It can be really... It can really be a little overwhelming to... St that looked like it was spelt wrong. It isn't, but it, it looked like it. Anyway, it, it can really be a little overwhelming to start reporting in a whole new region when you don't really know anyone here. What can you help me with? Well, I can help you with a little bit of everything. Look at this Tommy Vassetti looking motherfucker over here. I can help you with a little bit of everything. We can talk a little about my expectations and our mutual roles, or we can talk about your future sources. And then, naturally, we can we could also just send you out on an assignment I have for you. Well, let's start with the basics. Okay, so look. Opinion went up a little bit. He likes people to be respectful and know their place. Damn, look at that jawline. Your role is to be an investigative reporter. That means you have to find stories about people and events that you find interesting. It's important that you base your stories on statements from your sources and that you behave yourself like a good journalist if you want to be able to use your articles for something proper. You don't want to write for the Daily Star, you filthy fucking slag. Um, can you tell me more about my sources? Your sources are your most important tool with respect to creating credible stories. Therefore, it's extremely important that you don't take, make them into enemies because without your sources, there are no stories. Your credibility with respect to them will, ensure, will help ensure they share their stories and knowledge with you, and that's why it's important to maintain a good relationship with them. But I've always learned you should be critical of the ones you interview. Oh, that's absolutely right. It's important that you maintain your critical sense and don't let the sources misuse you to tell untrue stories. Remember that they have an interest in portraying their own versions of the story. And it's, up for, it's up to you to talk with everyone involved and be critical when necessary. It can be difficult, but that's one of the characteristics of a good journalist. It doesn't sound completely easy. How does it work with respect to the different political affiliations in the area? The dialogue here is kind of dry. I'm hoping this is just because it's the tutorial. Good qu- fuck me, just block of text hits me in the face. Good question. You have to remember that people talk to each other here in the region. Uh, when you write an article, people will read it, and if you write a lot for pro-Israeli newspapers, the Palestinian people will be less likely to talk with you, and vice versa. That could mean you have to help with some small tasks to get on the good side again. Rumour spreads kick quickly here in the area, and favour will often be rewarded by others. Uh, what did you say these favours are good for? Are they bribes, or what? No, it'd be wrong to call it a bribe, but it could be necessary to do favours to people in order to get on their, to get on their or their acquaintances' good side. You'll find out that people here are likely to trust you more if you help them or someone they know. That's how it works here. I'll mark a couple of people on your map that might be able to help you. I have GPS locations inserted into their bodies. I can find them at any time. Any time. Well, I'll keep my eyes open and try to keep help them when I can. Hey, we've got many quests. Nice. Is there more you want to know about? Uh, okay, I'd like to hear more about my role and your expectations. You write your articles by collecting quotes from the people you talk to. You can sort through the quotes in your notebook after the interview and find the best ones to use for your article. You'll, you'll phone in the article to the office, but come see me whenever you're ready to do that. Try pressing the quote button now and delete the quote from your notebook after this conversation. Fuck you, fourth wall, we're doing a tutorial! Which newspapers can I choose from? We deliver articles to three newspapers. The Israeli newspaper, Israeli Post, the Palestinian newspaper, Palestine Today, and the European newspaper, Global News. Each newspaper has, naturally, their preferences with respect to the content and angle. 
Okay, there's a little bit of everything to choose from, and you're saying my articles will have to be adjusted according to which newspaper I write for? Exactly. However, it doesn't mean that your research shouldn't have to be thorough. Remember that. Okay, rem enough about that. Just we'll start on the assignment. Which newspaper do you want to write for? Remember that it affects the quotes that you should collect from those involved. Well, let's just go with Global News. Let's try at least start relatively impartial. Okay, Global News is interested in you covering the conflict up close. What events take place? What happens during this kind of military action? How are possible tri prisoners treated and how dangerous is it for the soldiers? Okay, what were the other possible choices? Let's actually hear them all out. Good, the Israeli Post is interested in stories about the way in which the IDF protects the Israeli citizens against terrorism. Talk with the soldiers and get their stories. Try to talk with any possible prisoners and see if you can report about life on the border between... About life on the border between life and death. Sorry, life in two, two places in that sentence fucked me over a little bit. And Palestine Today. Palestine Today is interested in getting stories about the soldiers' abuse of prisoners. They would like you to document the way the suspects are treated and, the way, and they want to hear about corruption and brutal interrogation methods, as well as the potentially innocent people who might be arrested. Wow, you were just able to spin that in three different ways perfectly. Okay, well, I'm going to stick with global news just to kind of have an even kill to work with for the moment. Fine, hurry over to IDF headquarters here in this part of town. The soldiers are preparing themselves now. The commander is Roy Lewison. Good luck and be ready to get a good story. I will. I'll report back when I've collected a bunch of quotes. <laughs> My al <laughs> alignment. Israel or Palestine. The two genders. Uh, oh, I can... Okay, so I can rotate with Q and E. Oh, I can zoom right in. Very nice. Ah, oh, but I can't zoom with the mouse wheel. That's kind of unfortunate. Alright, fine. Okay, let's have a look in the notebook. Henry Fulbright said, You write your articles by collecting quotes from people you talk to. You can sort through the quotes in your notebook after the interview and find the best ones for your article. You'll find in the article, blah, 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 blah. E and A's! I don't need... I'm not going to be quoting my fucking boss in this article. I am here. Payphone, taxi. Roy and Miriam... Okay, how's that? Fantastic! <laughs> oh my god! It's it's gorgeous. It's literally fantastic. Okay, I am assuming I'm trying to go. Hang on a second. Is there? Okay, that's map as well. I guess let's go up the road to that taxi. Man, this feels like GTA. It's fucking bizarre how they've just placed. Oh god. The controls are definitely not helping. Take a cab. Hey, I found the... <laughs> found an Uber. Let's fucking go. Okie dokie. Right, now I'm... Oh, there we go. Okay, Shaquille. Let's go and have a word with Shaquille. Oh, no, oh, what the fuck? No, sorry, I'm getting used to walking. I'm not very good at it. Hey! What's happening, bro? Hi there, you must be Henry's new journalist, the one. My name is Shaquille. I've become a small task for you that might improve your standing with the Palestinian community. Do you have time to help me? Oh yeah, sure, I'm supposed to be going to like a police raid right now, I don't give a fuck! That's great! I need for someone to go and talk to the city official about some water, and I need to have a letter to deliver in Jerusalem. I'll help you with- oh, let's talk about the water situation. It's just that my family's part of town is without water. His runners have shut it off because they suspect a terrorist attack. It's happened before. You can usually get water from the well, but it's drying out because of the heat. Can you go to the city council and complain for us? Alright, I'll go and make a complaint by proxy to the city hall. Where's the fucking city hall? <laughs> Map! Why? Well... I at least appreciate the game not putting a kind of violent yellow tint or everything, like every fucking American game and TV show likes to do. It's like, oh, in the Middle East, let me just smear some fucking Vaseline over the screen. Oh, God. It oh, oh, okay, so it actually automatically orients me as well. So, I now know to go south because that's the direction. The camera can't keep up with me. That's a mild concern. Like, I'm moving and it's taking me to the bottom of the screen and I'm almost running off of it. How fast can I go? Can I actually just sprint right off the... Okay, there we go. So, civilians are not allowed beyond this point. Um... Ah, I'm a journalist and I'm here to talk to you about your motivation for shutting off Port Walter to parts of Abedis. Of course, what would you like to know? 
Well, I would like to know that you're... What? Hang on a second. Okay. What are we saying here? Uh, I'd like to know how you can use the public's need for water. I mean, ju yeah, justify yourself, if you don't mind. It's some kind of mistake. I'll talk to my superiors and have that fixed in a time. Oh, no time. All right. <laughs> this isn't fixed when we return to Abu Dis. This will be making headlines. Am I not in Abu Dis right now? Never fucking mind. Anyway, I've shouted at a local official. <laughs> Turn the water on. Oh, shit. All right. Fair enough. And then sprint back up the road. Uh, oh, yeah. He was just down the street. Could you not do this? It didn't require much finessing or polit Oh, man, I'm just shunting people out of the way. Excuse me? Oh, no. Okay. I can push men out of the way. Women? No. I've just been told one of the affected people that the water is turned on again. Fuck, in the time it took me to cross two blocks, just someone went in and went, Oh, shit, that's not turned on. Turned a tap. There we go. Oh, thank you very much. Happy to help. Anything else I can do? Well, I'm going back to Israel anyway, so... I promised a friend of mine that I'd deliver this to, uh, letter to Yasmin, a Palestinian woman he knows. But you would have to be a far easier time getting to Jerusalem than me, so it would be a mean a lot for me. Please give her this letter. She should be next to the checkpoint at the entrance. Alright, I'll go find her. Hang on a second, I need to... Okay, so, taxi's back over that. It's annoying I can't close it with M as well. I can open it with M. Doesn't close with that. Jerusalem. <laughs> oh, yes. That is a taxi driver and a half. Look at the girth on that man. Sweat Jesus. Right. I'm now looking for Yaz, who will be off to my left. I'm liking how there's actually no music, really. Like, you can hear the call to player, call to prayer, even. Call to player, fucking hell. I can't English. Hello, Yasmin. I've got a letter for you. Ah, yes I am. What does he have for me? Ah, oh, my name is Duan. I have a letter for you. It's right here. Oh, thank heavens! It's from my boyfriend! Oh, I'm so happy that you've been able to get this to me. This conflict is killing all potential for our love. It's terrible. You have to know how much I suffer. This means a lot to me and him. Thank you very much, Duan. I understand it completely. Things aren't easy for anyone in this conflict. Oh, you should get back to Shaquille, though. Take care. Right, uh, I, I would, but I actually do have to go and do my fucking job now, so I'm assuming... Miriam or Roy down here are the people I need to talk to, so let's just go south through. <laughs> I've got such an urge to just put, like, GTA background sounds as I'm running through the city. I feel like that would be a smidge disrespectful. Oh, Lord. Okay, through the back streets. Some kind of backstreet boy. Uh, no, well, halfway through there. Hang on a second. I'm getting lost. You never gave me directions to where the fucking guy was. I'm just running around the city. I just got in a cab and he took me into the middle of Palestine. I was very confused. Right. Where am I now? Oh, okay, cross the road to my right. And there should be Miriam and Roy. Hi there, you must be the one. Henry's new journalist. My name is Miriam. Have you come to help me? I have a couple of small tasks for you that might improve your standing with the immense Israeli community. I'm busy. No. <laughs> I don't mean that I don't want to, just that I actually should go and do the thing I'm supposed to be doing right now, which is... Yeah, I should have guessed it's where the military vehicles are. Is everybody ready? Remember to secure your weapons and keep an eye on the surrounding buildings. We don't know whether there are tunnels or anything they can slip out through. We've received a, a reliable tip on illegal activities in one specific house, but it could easily be more. Let's just grab that and jot it down. Nice animation. Uh, Shalom. Sorry for interrupting, but it has to do with me going along on this mission. I can't say anything. I can't say I know anything about that. Who are you? That can't be right. You must have heard of something. I mean, I'm an American journalist. I have a deadline to meet. Uh, I couldn't care less about your deadlines. Even though you look like a journalist, we have to be careful. What newspaper are you from? I write for a bureau that does articles for, among others, the European newspaper Global News. Mm. Well, I think about it, I remember something about that, but I don't think that you can write whatever you want just because you've got permission to come along on patrol. I'm gonna quote that shit. Freedom of the press, bitch! Um, I'm gonna put a good... I'm not gonna be rude, but I'm gonna write down whatever the fuck I want. Okay, that's good. Oh, that's good. I'm so worried. Don't let me hold you guys back. It's dangerous down there, even for journalists, no matter who they are. I think you should have some protective gear on. I'm just putting on this bulletproof vest. Um, I mean, 
Better to have it and not need it than need it than not have it. Mm, let's get going and catch some terrorists. <laughs> Fucking Captain America over here. Well, Captain Israel, technically. On the road again. He's keeping efforts that are violating your rights. I'm on the road again. Sorry, I wasn't going to get political in the game. Cough. Are we going to... We're not going to knock. We're just going to blow the fucking doors down. Okay. Huh. Hey, Aubrey. Should be excited to see what happens, but I bet our tip holds true. Roy normally has control of things, and there have been problems in this part of town before. The informant is a reliable source, so I think we're safe in our assumptions. <laughs> Fucking the disparity between these two. We'll have to hope we we'll have to hope so with you tearing through the suspect's home. It can't be something that makes you popular. Or I bet you're right. I've heard about countless Arab terrorist organizations spreading death and destruction. <laughs> Fucking Christ, you know what? Why not? Let's just get let really play into their bullshit. That really upped it. Wow, fucking hell. We're not here to be popular, but to protect Israel from constant terror attacks. The Arabs send missiles and suicide bombers that kill innocent Israelis, and we have to try and do something about it. We just stand here and watch our civilian population be killed, but not of much use. Quote. Hmm, I can certainly understand that safety comes before all else. Well, but not all Palestinians are terrorists, are they? No, maybe not, but after more than a thousand years of persecution, we're not taking any chances. In Israel, all Jews have a safe harbour. We will no longer go unwillfully into cattle trucks in the direction of gas chambers like in World War II. But talk to Roy, he knows much more about this than I do. Would like to point out the Palestinians aren't fucking Nazis, but I can see the kind of just not having that shit happen to you again kind of feeling. Oh look, something's coming. They must have gotten hold of that terrorist. See, there he comes. I knew Roy was right. Isn't it kind of odd to call him a terrorist without any proof? How do you know, how do you know he's a terrorist? Yeah, I don't know. I just listen to Roy. He says that we get good and reliable information from Arab civilians for these operations. In any case, we know that the terrorist is the right guy from his ID papers. He's a person registered living in the house and the picture matches him too. So he lives in the flat. Ergo terrorist. Gonna wait till he's looking away, then just fucking write that shit down. Uh, I think Roy's being a little rough with that guy. How can you even be sure he's done anything? I think Roy's doing exactly what has to be done. I just keep to myself in the background. I don't have Roy's experience, and it's hard for me to assess what's really happening. Okay, I'll talk to Roy. Thanks for the talk, Armory. Okay, let me just. Reliable tip on illegal activities. I'm gonna want to keep holding that. Yeah, we can get rid of Captain fucking America there. He right away just because you've got permission to come along on patrol. The only experienced soldier told me that the commander received information about the prisoner's weapons and similarly they got Apparently, often they get their information that way. The soldier Omri told me with seriousness in his voice why he believed it was important they came out on missions like this one. We're not here to be popular, but to protect Israel from constant terror attacks. The Arabs send missiles and suicide bombs to kill others and Israelis, and we have to try and do something about it. We just stand here and watch our civilian population. Blah, 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 blah. Now, I'm going to get rid of that as well. That kind of says the same thing. Cool, right. Khaled! Best in the world! Ow! Damn it! What's going on? Who are you? It's none of your business. Who are you? You look like a settler in that bulletproof vest. I'm a journalist and I came along to cover the conflict between the Israelis and Palestinians. I'm writing an article. This is your chance to talk to the press. So the bulletproof jacket made me look immediately started this off on the wrong foot. Interesting. You strike me as someone I can trust. Why should I talk to you? <laughs> You're in no position to refuse to talk to me. Just spit it out. Fucking hell. As a journalist, I never take sides no matter what role I'm given. <coughs> you can easily talk with me. I'm an independent of everything that happens here. I don't have to say anything at all. What do you want with me anyway? Then why don't you just throw me in jail? Uh, let's have a look here. Okay. What happened there inside the house? What are you doing here? I was supposed to meet a friend about buying a car. I had my son with me to show him the area I used to live. I wanted to show him my childhood home so he could see what it was like for me when I was a boy. But suddenly these soldiers ran in and handcuffed me. Quote. 
Where's your friend, then? Well, where's your son? He's not here, is he? He left, luckily, before the occupiers came. I hope, he's, I hope he's old enough to find his own way home. After he lost his mother, he's been very independent, so I'm sure he'll do fine. Otherwise, I'll hold Israel responsible. Oh, that sounds tragic. How did he lose his mother? It's a sad story which involves pigs like the ones that would tie me down here. Well, you tell me more about it. <sighs> Terrorists, tyrants, Jews, call them what you want. My wife was shot during a demonstration against the, con against the construction of a wall of separation. She had Nabil in her arms. The bullet went right through her and got stuck in his leg. She died on the spot. She was at a demonstration. A peaceful demonstration against a tyrannical occupying state. Quote. I, mm, anyway. Not being political. Not being political. Sounds awful. How could Israel just try to do such a thing? You'll have to decide for yourself. I'm sure that it wasn't an accident. One ought to be able to demonstrate in a democratic country without putting one's life in danger. My son lost his mother that day and I lost my wife. <laughs> that sounds tragic, but I really can't relate to that right now. I have to talk to some of the other sons. Goodbye, cut fucking Christ. No, take care, man. Oh, listen to his story at least, and he appreciated that. Okay, Roy. Oh, there you are. So far, there's nothing big to write about, but don't worry, it'll come. Why are we so hard on him? You're pushing him and dragging him along. It wasn't hard at all. I just wanted to show him who's boss. Oh, well, I can understand how that might be necessary, being a fucking cop and all. If anything, I might have been too easy on him. <laughs> Carlos just sat there like, Bro, what the fuck? <laughs> I just gave you my tragic backstory. You're sat there like, Yeah, fucking step on his neck. Fucking Christ. Time will tell if he's really innocent. Have you found any proof? Nothing has turned up yet, but I have been on a lot of patrols, and in my experience, tells me there's he's hiding something. There are usually tunnels and a lot of other stuff behind the houses. That, that's that's just sewerage. That's just plumbing, motherfucker. Is it a serious problem that you have no proof? We were tipped off about the man. We had to the informant to take this seriously. The people have been known to handle this kind of situations. I can see that. It's nice that some journalists can see things from our side. Well, that's certainly a tough situation. Well, well, look here. Looks like Mordecai just found something inside the house. Now our friend will have some explaining to do. Didn't I tell you we would find evidence of terrorist activities? Our informant is very seldom wrong. Mm. But you don't know whether the prisoner has anything to do with it. Oh my god, you are naive. Of course he knew about Mordecai's find. It's probably Kazam Rockets or something similar. Mm. Well, I'll talk to Mordecai and get the details on his discovery. Okay, we've got four Those are some missiles. Okay. We did it! It's nice to feel like we made a difference. These missiles could have landed in Israel and killed civilians. Shit, well, good good thing you found them. Yes, yeah, luckily the IDF is able to hold the terror attacks down by stopping the production and smuggling of weapons. We seize tremendous amounts of weapons nowadays with terrorist organisations increasing their activities. It's important work and I'm proud to be a part of it. It's my duty. What do you mean by your duty? As Israelis, we have a duty to defend our state against terrorists that want to kill us. There are some who don't think that military service is important, but missions like this one make me believe it's all worth it. We can't let them push us around. You must understand that if we slack off on the fence, Israel will be gone in ten years. So you believe that these missions are absolutely necessary no matter what the costs are for the Palestinians? That's a leading question and a half. Some would say my opinions are extreme, but I am positive that the Palestinian government looks the other way. They are completely indifferent and the Arabs are generally hostile towards Israel. If they really wanted to stop this, they would be more effective, like just like we are in Jerusalem. Quote... Maybe it's not that they've been hostile. You have been an occupying power since 1967, after all. Uh, <laughs> that's probably due to deep poverty. Due to the deep poverty and despair of the population. I completely agree. It's completely unacceptable that a government would let something like that slide. Because the government has absolute control over its population. Uh, let's just say... Uh, okay. Setting aside the occupation, quality of life is a very, is a very big gulf. Possibly, but poverty is not an excuse to turn to terrorism. No, but it doesn't fucking help. We have to crack down on it hard on everyone so Israel's security isn't threatened. And that's something to be discussed for a long time. I'm not going to piss him off. Okay, so, got those last couple of quotes. Some would call my opinions extreme, the soldier Mordecai began, but I am positive that the Palestinian government looks the other way. They are completely indifferent, and the Arabs are generally hostile towards Israel. If they really wanted to stop this, they would generally be more effective, just like we are in Jerusalem. 
He apparently believed the government had a large part of the responsibility for the continuation of the attacks. I feel like I'm going to write something really fucking inflammatory. Review. Score, 1 out of 11. I feel like I may not necessarily be... Uh... Okay, could I get rid of one of these? So let's have a look here. Very popular popular commander of sea from range of problems of it. Lally good drivers. Well, it was a brownie. Do something else. I think the tips may be not the most important thing. Let's have another talk with Khaled. Okay, how do you explain the rockets they found in here? I don't know anything about those rockets. I have no idea where they are, what they are, or where they came from. But you came from in there, didn't you? You just got arrested because you're in the house with those rockets. It's a conspiracy. They're just looking for a scapegoat. The rockets are Israeli, guaranteed. I've heard stories about them being placing evidence in order to arrest us. I'm sure this is the same thing here. Listen here, I saw you come out from in there. You have to come up with a better explanation than some vague conspiracy theory. What do you want me to say? I'm a fanatic suicide bomber who kills small children. I serve a lot in my country. I will not use. I won't use any more time. Waste. I won't waste any more time on you and your wild accusations. So you aren't at all responsible for those rockets that Mordecai just found, and you aren't a terrorist. No, but no, but if you ask me, it's about time the Israelis have got to feel our strength. Hamas is, and with Allah's help, going to drive the Israelis out sooner or later. Allah wills it. We aren't fanatics, but more clear-sighted than most. Hmm, I think that sounds kind of scary, but enough about that. I better be getting going now. I'm gonna quote that. Cool. Uh. Well, shit got fucking wild very quickly. Can I just go in there? No, oh, all right, fine. Hey, Armory. So I'm just slamming myself over you. Just grease myself all over your back, hey. Well, we did it. What did I tell you? Did you find anything? I uh, haven't found anything. No. Do you find proof that Khaled here has something to do with these missiles? It'll come when we've interrogated him. Mordecai found a secret room with Kassam rockets in the house. That's pretty incriminating. Uh, I spoke with Mordecai, but I haven't found anything else. No. So Mordecai has control over the situation with these rockets, so we can just turn back. I'd like to look a little around more before we continue. No trust is you. Trust is yours. We're going back now, but be careful. It's not... Not at all safe to be here all alone. Uh, I will. I'll see you around, Roy. I'm just gonna walk home, I guess. Move. You, you could stop shoving the dude. I'm pretty sure. Oh, never mind. They have teleportation technology. Can I not go in the building and see? Oh, hello. Oh shit. Okay, there was. There was actually a hole at the back of the building. I don't have anything for you to, to, to talk about. I have a feeling I have fucked this ever so slightly. I thought I couldn't go around here. Apparently I could. And I've just shafted myself more than a little bit. Bollocks. Well, that's what you get for not doing some due diligence. Right, let's have a look at this. Where am I right now? I am there. Jean-Pierre. Oh, God, there's French people in here. How horrifying. Right, I need to head up and get over here. We'll be back once I've, well, got over there. Actually, Jean-Pierre's just there. Let's go and have a word with him. If there are French people in here, I'm going to have a fucking word. Oh, ha, ha. Baguette. Good day, I'm Jean-Pierre Racure. You must be a new journalist, as you need to film by tell me about. Uh, yeah, that's me. Fulbright said you were the leading authority in the area, and I thought I might be able to use a little of your expertise. I bet I could help you get a larger understanding of it. I work as a source of any journalist down here, and I'm sure you could also use my help. Well, that's very nice of you. First and foremost, I'd like to hear a little more about what types of problems there are down here. The biggest problems are related to conflict with, between the Palestinians and the Israelis. As you probably know, the state of Israel came about because of the fate that six million Jews suffered during World War II. In 1947, the United Nations put forward the idea of dividing the land between Palestinians and Jews. The Arabic-speaking Palestinians felt, however, it wasn't fair to give up half of their land to a people that made up about 6% of the population. Well, that seems like a fair argument. What happened then? The Jews accepted the terms that, according to their own perception, 
were considerably less favourable than what they would have wanted, but now they could have a homeland even though the Arab people that lived in the region opposed the decision. The Arabs made up two-thirds of the population and didn't believe that the agreement was fair, but the pressure from the international community was enormous. What did the Palestinians do then? They did what they believed was necessary and went to war. The first war of many lasted from 1948 to 49. The Arab army was no match for the Jews, however, and when the conflict ended, around 78% of the area was occupied by the Jewish state. Several thousands of Arabs fled the area, and a number of them on their descendants live in the refugee camps of the West Bank and in Gaza. Gee, that sounds terrible. What was the end of the armed conflict? No, not at all. In 1956, Israel invaded Egypt and occupied Sinai and Gaza. The Arabs believed that it was a cooperation between Israel, England and France to regain control of the Suez Canal. Later in 1967 came the Six-Day War, which a lot of people think forms the basis for the present conflict when Israel invaded Egypt. Ow, that was over 30 years ago. It's a lot more now. After the Six-Day War, Israel had taken control over the Sinai Peninsula, the Gaza Strip, the West Bank, the eastern part of Jerusalem and Golan Heights. They were incorporated as a sort of war booty and Israel became drastically larger. With the new territories came over one million Arabs who were suddenly stateless along with a ton of other problems. But Israel doesn't have control over all these territories anymore. No, that's right. Sinai was given back to Egypt as part of a peace agreement between the two countries. But Israel kept the other territories and they are what the current conflict is about. Around 300,000 Palestinians fled to Lebanon from the West Bank while about 600,000 stayed in the area which they believe they owned. We still see these tensions. It sounds as though there have been some violent years. Wasn't there something about Israel also almost losing at some point? Yes, that's right. In 1973, Israel was attacked by a coalition of Arab states led by Egypt and Syria. The first attack fell on the Jewish holiday Yom Kippur, which is where the war got its name. Israel was close to losing the war, but the US helped with military supplies at the last minute, and the war turned back in favour of Israel. Uh, what happened then? Was there peace in the area? <laughs> No, no, you, you poor, sweet, chiselled bastard, you. No, not at all. In 1982, Israel went to war with Lebanon. According to Israel, it was to protect themselves against an attack from PLO that happened in southern Lebanon. There were, there were a lot of tragedies in that war. Several hundreds, maybe thousands of civilians were killed in a couple of re at a couple of refugee camps, and the war caused huge damages. Even though the war ended earlier, the conflict continued all the way up to the year 2000. That's a long time. Isn't it also when the terrorism began? Well, what about the present conflict? Right now there's a kind of peace in the area. When I say a kind of, that's because there is still violence. There is settler violence and there are still terrorist attacks. Abuse from both sides is pretty normal here. There are many in the region who believe that peace is near because the conflict lies so deep that it's difficult to find a solution to the problem. I can see that. It's difficult to say whether there'll be peace soon because the negotiations are always collapsing. It doesn't help that organisations like Hezbollah and Hamas declare that they won't stop before Israel is wiped out. In the same way, the building of that big wall around Israel doesn't contribute to the feeling of possible peace. There are, in other words, many problems that have to be solved and there's no easy solution. Man, it's almost like politics is complicated and not the kind of thing you can just spunk out a tweet over and think you've made a difference. As, as Jean-Pierre just fucking stares into my fucking soul. Jesus Christ, man. Uh, fucking hell. Ah, uh, it's difficult to track of it all, but thank you for your help. The pleasure was all mine. Good luck with your article, and come again if I can help with some other articles. Thank you. Well, Jean-Pierre is at the very least a font of Wikipedia articles. Uh, let's get to a taxi and get back to a payphone, or we'll go out to our editor, which whichever one we can achieve first. I've still got Shaki to go. Oh, actually, I'll drop him with Shaki while I'm over here. No, 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 Shaq. Round the corner, sir. Thank you. Well, Jesus. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Don't mind me. Moving through. Yep, it's a... Look, I'm trying to... Fuck you. <laughs> I'm a menace to everything on the street. Suck my dick. Ah, you're back and you have given her the letter I had. Thanks a lot, Duan. Do you have time for one more thing? I need you to deliver this shipment of extremely large bananas. Uh, I'm happy to help. What can I do? Oh, no, sorry. I don't have any... Oh, <laughs> absent-minded motherfucker. Okay, let's get in a taxi and get the shagging shaggery out of here. Oh, yeah, I can't actually get in this camp unless I'm actually highlighting it properly.
Okay, well, let's head. Well, let's just go to the pavement. We'll probably just do one, one, um, article and then see how this goes. Hopefully you guys think it's interesting we can keep going. And that I haven't just said some absolutely heinous shit at any given point. <laughs> like, I, 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 just putting, throwing my hat down for a second just to say kind of at least broad strokes how I feel. Everyone involved in this conflict is entitled to dignity and entitled to their own personal liberty and freedom. However, I am going to feel somewhat on the on the side of Palestine here, at least because mainstream Western media tends to lean more heavily in the other direction, and I, I call that bullshit out pretty quickly. Uh, let's have a quick, quick chat with Henry. Well, my friend, have you collected enough material to be able to piece together a good article? Now, I've talked to a few people, yes. Do you think I should talk to more? It's a little hard to tell. With whom have you spoken? Well, I spoke with Jean-Pierre Ricoeur of the University. He's also usually a brilliant and talkative source. You might think about talking with Leah Lewison at Batel at Bet Salem here at Jerusalem. Look at your map for the locations. Uh, I don't really think I'll be going all the way there to get a little background knowledge. It'll be good enough with what I have. Have you followed up on the mission itself? I hear they arrested a man. Oh, I've got to go and fucking fuck the fucking fuck. It's worth thinking about it, yes, of course, but your article and you're free to go with it however you want. If you're really ready to put your article together, you can go over and use a telephone booth to call into the office. Otherwise, you're welcome to try and dig a little deeper. Well, I suppose we can dig a little deeper, it's just I've... It's annoying I can only have five quotes. Okay, yeah, that's a bit too contentious. Let's get rid of that. So... We're not here to be popular. I'll get rid of those... Okay, so... Protesting his innocence... Wife was shot. Positions are extreme. Okay, let's go with those. Right, so we can head off now and go and have a word with Mordecai, who's over in the bottom right corner. We'll be back in a second once I've got over there. Fast travel will be fucking lovely in this, I would just like to say. I appreciate the whole tone of just running around the city and accomplishing shit, but fuck you! It feels like maybe a little way to speed things up would be appreciated. Mordecai, Mordecai, let's talk about that guy you beat up. What are you doing here? Shouldn't you be sitting and writing a story somewhere? I just want to check up on the situation before I start writing. What happened with the prisoner? Is he doing alright? Yes, but I thought you might have something new to tell me for my story. Ah, let's go with that first one. There isn't much to tell. He was interrogated, but he wouldn't admit to his guilt. As far as I know, there are plans to hand him over to the Palestinian authorities when we're finished with him. What's going to happen to him, What's going to happen to him there? I don't know, but it doesn't mean much to me right now. We got him and his weapons, and he'll probably end up in prison where he belongs. Now I have to go and talk with the others. Alright, thanks for helping. Goodbye. Why can I try again? Piss! Piss and arse, I just deleted some comments for no particular fucking reason. I should have fucking quoted him. Bollocks! Can I not remember it? Fuck! Wait, can I actually even, even save her or do I just literally play through these straight through? I think I do, actually. Yeah, I, I can literally... I literally just have to play the whole thing straight through with no stops, otherwise I'm kind of shafted. Right. Now I've talked... Well, now I know what's happening with that. Let's go talk to the office. Alright, Fulbright News Agency speaking with Jonathan Norris. Um... Alright, hey, it's Jonathan. It's Dwar Masood here. I've collected material from my article and I'm ready to phone it into you guys. Excellent. Just like me to remind you that you need to remember the focus of your story and the newspaper that you choose to write for. Remember to use quotes that are applicable and suited to the newspaper of your choice, otherwise the readers will not likely take well to it. Yeah, I remember. I remember. Alright, sounds great. Let's get to it. Okay, now how does this look? This is a headline. Oh, okay, so we get to choose all of this. Okay. <laughs> Some of these are a bit leading. Israeli aggressors destroy Palestinians' home and perform his legal arrest. It wasn't illegal. They had evidence inside the building and they were acting off a tip, so that's not really correct. Uh, Israeli Defense Force captures terrorists and seize weapons meant to murder civilians. Uh, speculative. ADF captures terrorist suspect of weapons in military raid in Abu Dis. That means that seems more straightforward and to the point. Okay, in terms of photos, what do we got here? I mean, that seems... Shit, are these actual pictures of the Palestinian... 
oh fuck me okay fair enough I mean that seems like the thing to put there so uh, okay let's have a look at some quotes prisoner stuck with his innocence and then body and then subtext Journalist level, intern. Oh, fucking hell. News value, well, I mean, that's okay. That's not bad at all. I suppose that's what we'll just have to go with, as I seem to have slightly shagged this. The journalism quality. How experienced you are after submitting the article. Oh, okay, so it's up to that, at least. I mean, that's better than average. Slightly more in favour of Palestine, but not ridiculously anti-Israel. Yeah, okay. Your first article makes it to the page 7 of the daily edition of Global News. A colleague from the newspaper calls you and tells you has read the article and he felt the story of the arrest of the suspected terrorist Khalid Amouni touched on important issues. In the days that follow, Global News received a number of letters from interested readers who want to know more about what happened to the weapons and the Palestinian who was arrested. A couple of readers comment on the problems regarding preventative arrests and the need for protection of Israel in letters to the newspaper, which incites the editor to do another story in Khaled's fate. Another journalist is assigned to the job and he writes a follow-up, which is not quite as popular as your original article, but it does show that Khaled is being held on terrorist charges and that it was not an illegal arrest. A few local newspapers in the Israel area pick up the story as well. Hey, you know what? That's pretty good. Didn't give any kind of incorrect information, could have maybe had some more quotes to work with, but had enough to do the article at least. That went by way too quick for me to read properly, so I will probably not put my scrambled attempts at reading, but um, yeah, getting uh, getting displaced is fucking brutal. But anyway, um, thank you for watching. If you think this is interesting, please let me know, and I'll continue it. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching, and um, yeah, be good to each other. Goodbye. <laughs>